I'm loving myself. Yeah! Woo! Yeah! Woo! Yeah! Anyways, hi everybody. All right, here we are. Here we are. Yeah! I love you, everybody. Yeah! Anyways. I really want to turn off this video because I feel like what I intended to state on this video, I'm not even successfully stating. I didn't mean to just act like that, everybody. But it must be because of my mental illness. Anyways, I wish people could spend some time with me and be my friend. Yes. When I started uh, dressing up and everything, not necessarily like this, I, where I give them little things like this to play with. You know what this is, don't you? Yes, the toilet paper roll. <laughs> oh, no. oh, gosh. Oh, it almost fell. So, when I was dressing very well, cufflinks, bow ties, Cary Grant, Clark Gable, you know the drill. I had a lot of men, but I had a lot of women that were pursuing me in friendship. They loved on me. They knew I was gay and everything. Well, when I started, and these are women that later on rejected me. Because... My uh, PP, my physiology, doesn't get affected by a woman, the JJ. And uh, I didn't have the spiritual gift of making money, so I couldn't afford them. And I couldn't uh, finance uh, giving them children. So the women rejected me. That's how selfish they are. Yes, the breeders, honey bunny. Yes, the women that are against abortion. Yeah, because I didn't have the money for them. They rejected me even in the friendship. So they couldn't hold out for the friendship without, boing, spreading eagle. And that's not what I'm looking for. I'm looking for uh, a global human family. I'm looking for the best friend, the lover, all that jazz, uh, don't hold me true to that. But I have desperately in the past begged for friendships. <laughs> and that's why I'm just shock rock today and I don't really care what people have to say about me because I'm going to be me. And when people found out that I'm not on crystal meth, and I'm in a PhD program, but I'm broke, and I'm gay, and I had a knife over my head, and I was raped by coercion, somehow they don't look at all the positives of me overcoming my obstacles, according to Joyce DeWitt, Janet Wood, Three's Company, yes, she knows who I am, and she told me that I put a smile on her heart and on her face, because of all the obstacles I have overcome with uh, courage and grace. And so, you know, I don't have to commit suicide, basically. But that all stated, uh, I wanted to talk to you about you. Because everybody is looking for something for themselves, and if there's no bang for their buck, they flick you off. And when they start making more money than you, uh, and traveling the world, they diss you. So, yes, I have a family member that went to Harvard University, and this is the cup. So for all you people in Santa Barbara that rejected me after the years of keeping me around because I have great uh, energy and fabulous uh, manners and good wardrobe, all you people that had me around for that and when you learned that I actually have mental illness and I live with bipolar and I'm broke, you all flicked me off. For all you people that did that, I want you to know I have more than you. 
even though I didn't show you what you want to see for your social stratification or for what you want to see in people to become the status quo marker for Christians that are against gay people. For all you that couldn't hold through, especially in 2018 since everybody hates gay people, uh, at least let's just look at the Christian community, okay? Oh, they love people. They don't want to hate people. No, 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 no. The minister at the Westlake Calvary Community Church in Westlake Village, right out of Calabasas and um, Malibu, uh, between Santa Barbara and uh, Beverly Hills, Westlake Village, the very wealthy community has a Four Seasons built more, uh, what have you. And the whole stretch along the freeway by the church uh, that I attended, that the minister uh, spoke. Uh, it's all Lamborghinis and uh, Maserati cars for sale. So at one point I wanted to move there. But I ended up moving to Los Angeles instead to uh, pursue the fame and fortune. And I have people that are rejecting me. I don't know why. I've been through all the things in the world. Yes, climb every mountain and cross every the JJ, honey bunny. Climb every mountain, cross every the JJ. Oh, somebody's calling me. This is great. I have a friend. No. No, no, no. This person that's calling me right now telephoned me. I met him on a chat line and he's like, I gave him my number. He's from New York. He's Italian. He has the body and everything. And I get on the phone, this was weeks ago, and he's like, uh, pedophiles? And I'm like, no. Click. Then he calls me back and he says, how are you doing? Because I picked up the phone. Because I don't like screening phone calls. And he said to me, how are you doing? And I says, well, he says, really, how's it going? And I knew he was looking for, you know, phone bone, you know, getting an erection on the telephone. And I said to him, I says, well, pe let's just say people are very selfish. And uh, you could be suicidal and be broke and, uh, you know manic depression, mental illness, but in a PhD program and sober and living in LA and raising 80% value to your name and they still reject you because of this. This is what they want. So he hung up the phone on me. Well, I didn't say all those things in so many ways, but I just explained that, you know, the problem is that people are very selfish today. So I called him back to let him know that when he could show some humanity and care for somebody as a friend, because I'm not looking for his money. Let me throw this away. Um, when he can call me back, then I am here for him. Oh, this is the, uh, the uh, cake I'm using for the show. Oh, you think he's calling again? Well, he could leave a message. But, oh, it only rang once. But, um, oh my goodness. So I'm just so busy trying to make everything perfect for everybody. And, oh, I wanted to share this with you. Because this is really, I think, one of my honest YouTube videos. Cell phones really uh, overwhelm me, the whole text messaging. And I only use my cellular device for roadside assistance. Part of me, I could barely even speak. <laughs> Let me put in tinctures in my mail. <laughs> See, um... I'm so alone that I'm so freaking out about people that will love on me and uh, the whole selfies and Facebook and Instagram and Twitter culture of if you don't support my pictures, you're jerking me around. People really want you to support their narcissism. And if you don't, they really think you're being their enemy. It's like crazy. So I'm dealing with a lot of people in LA that don't care about me. And so, but cell phones, rewind. Cell phones really overwhelm me because it's just so, uh, my whole life is online already. 
So, uh, so I write everybody's phone number on here. Some of these phone numbers I've written at least eight times in a row through the course of every, you know, six, five, whatever, three months. I, you know, this starts ripping and everything. This is uh, a piece of paper where I write everybody's name on it. So probably half of these people I'm going to have to just cross off because they're not really uh, behaving as family, as family, fictive kin or um, adopted family, LGBT, you know. Adopt people at the Gay and Lesbian Alliance. If your family is rejecting you because you're a homosexual and your church threw you out because you have AIDS, find adopted family. Well, <laughs> that was an accident. Some of these people are gay. A lot of straight people. And uh, I'm going to have to cross off their names. So, I'm sad about that. And, but I wanted to talk to you. Enough of, the God, this is 11 minute introduction about my psychobabble. Please forgive me. So, I'm going to talk to you about you. This is not about me. Uh, but it's about you. And I really want to get down to some basic things that uh, may help you understand what is happening in the world if you understand this selfishness that people are putting you through. They act real nice is what they do. Let me explain this to you. To you. They act nice to you, but they bite around the bush and they can't really be honest because they don't want to offend you and they don't want you to know the truth because if they know the truth about you being scared of homelessness or whatever you are, they are going to reject you. So what they do is they bite around the bush and tell you what you want to hear. And then behind your back, they stab you in the back. In fact, they will stab you in your chest in front of you while you're looking at them. Once they continue uh, gaining your friendship and they're screwing you over, then they start actually slapping you in the middle of your face and stabbing you in your heart in front of your face, right under your nose. This is after they graduate from getting away with stabbing you in the back. Then what they do is uh, they will, before or during or after, they will beg to, well, usually before, because they're busy sizing you up and sniffing around and putting you through their gauntlet to see if you're going to show them what they want to see. So then what they do to you is they basically, uh, before they really screw you over and ignore you and isolate you and separate you and put you in a corner where uh, you want to commit suicide or you want to hurt somebody that rejected you or whatever. And you have to get therapy for that, get on psychiatric medication and deal with all those problems. But what they do is before they reject you, they, they, they beg to know the truth. And then when you tell them the truth, they run the other way. So uh, this is the quality of people. They're not friends. They're the quality of people that are on the East Coast, the Midwest, and even the West Coast in California. San Francisco Bay Area, Palo Alto, Sausalito, Simpson Beach, Carmel, Montecito, uh, Beverly Hills. This is all across California, I can tell you that. The place you might not find all this hurt towards you is uh, Mexico. Because when you take a third world country, people, family, friends, usually stick together and work with one another. In America, as long as people have their jobs and their 401k, they're going to be selfish about their vacations and they're going to show off when they go to Europe or whatever on Facebook or Instagram or Twitter or whatever. But yet they won't return your phone calls. But yet they will be there for you to glorify them and masturbate their egos. Okay? So when you start investing your joy in people, be really cautious of are they the people that are going to be long standing and will be with you for a lifetime? Or are they the types of people that whitewash friendships and flick you off? See, whether they are or whether they're not, if you go forward treating everybody like they're mental illness, they're like they're mentally ill, you'll get further along with them and they will actually probably open doors for you. But when it comes down to 
bitch slapping them because let's say they don't accept you. Like I had somebody that I've known for over, gee, 30 years from high school. And all of a sudden I call them, you know, and we're in the Trump administration. And she's busy telling me that God did not make me to be who I am. I says, well, I live with this, 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 you know, bipolar, manic depression, mental illness, being gay. And she says, God did not make you to be gay. Well, that really sent me through the roof. So, for you, there may be people in your life that are not straight with you. They act straight with you because maybe they gave you... <laughs> Oh, gosh, maybe they gave you a free burrito, or they took you to the movies. This is early on in the friendship, so they could get to know you. And then when they got to know you, they kind of flick you off after you've invested time in them, and you've invested your own money in them. You spent more money on them than they ever spent on you to get you that burrito or their hamburger when they were getting to know you. People say they want honest people. But they don't. They want you to live the facade so they think the American dream is tangible and real because you've arrived. But when you start sharing the uh, nitty gritty about the pitfalls and the highs and the bipolar, whatever you're going through, um, they lose interest in you, and you do not become important to them. So, how do you deal with these people? Well, first of all, you call them. And this person called me, and they didn't leave a message, but I left a message for them after they hung up the phone on me. This guy from New York, remember? The guy that wants sex, that didn't care that people were selfish, and he asked me how, how it was going. So he's trying to call me because he's trying to get me on the phone for his chug -a -la 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 -la. And I says, no, I says, I've given my life to uh, many men. I've made a lot of mistakes by looking for love. And so now I'm really looking for friendships. And people cannot provide it. They say to you, enough of me, they'll say to you that they provide friendship. They'll even call you best friend when they meet you because you look good. But then when they find out you can't offer them what they want, okay, to masturbate their ego or to give them a money hard on because they're whores and they're trying to take from you. These whores are very good whores. Let me tell you, you'll never know they're whores until eight years is up. I mean, some of these whores... You'll know immediately, but some of these whores in your life, you'll learn that they're whores after 20 years has passed. You'll learn exactly the way they are wired. And for years, they try to keep you from that information. But yet they nitpick after they pick your brain to find out, you know, how messed up you are. So... What you'll need to do is, of course, call these people back and confront them. But when you meet people, you let them know right off that you understand most people, if not any, or if I had to put in my dentures, I could barely even speak. <laughs> oh, much better. You have to let these people know, okay? It helps if you do not let them know. Maybe you feel you need to let them know. Maybe you don't feel like you need to let them know. I don't want to tell you what you need to know. I want you to have your own opinion and, uh, you know, because this is great that people have their opinions and they can be honest about who they are, even though people don't like them or they don't have muscles or money or this is too uh, facade for them, you know, and all that jazz. Oh, look at the little red rooster pubic hairs. <laughs> they look like little rooster pubic hairs, little red round circular curly cue. I love it. Ah, so pretty. <laughs> Anyways, but back to you. People, uh, because uh, I, I want you to just realize that you don't have to commit suicide, okay? 
and you you can think about it. You can have undertones of suicidal thoughts, and your depression can talk to you, and all that jazz, and everything, and everything, every freaking fucking thing. Ah, hubba, hubba, hubba. Bing! But uh, you need to let people know when you meet them. I think you need to know, but or they need to know. But you are cognizant and knowledgeable that most people say they'll be your friends, but when something goes wrong and it's too much for them to handle, they flick you off and they, they are in a society where it's too easy to flick people off because you tell them, oh, I don't have the mental capacity or, oh, God didn't make you to be who you are, I can't talk with you. You know, when people transcend into the next entity, and plain after they leave this earth, they're going to find out it's a lot of spirit and not so much physical world, physical body. And they're going to realize that when they dissed you and they look back when they transcend over, uh, they owe you some apologies in heaven. Let's just put it that way. But it can be helpful. Pardon me. It could be helpful. I'm very respectful, but people don't like me because I'm feminine. Oh, can't handle my femininity. Oh, can't handle that I have some mental problems. Oh, can't handle that I don't have the money you want to see. Oh, well, I have manners and, you know, I clean up. I go to upscale places that most people don't go to, but enough of me. But I want you to build yourself up so you know that these people that have mistreated you are trash. And so, like I'm trying to say, I think it's really important if you let them know that you're cognizant and you are knowledgeable that people are superficial and they'll drop out. At the beginning, when they're getting to know you, they make sure that you are persuaded and convinced that they are your friends and they love you because you're fabulous. But these people, when they learn, they are usually surface. I don't want to use the word superficial because it's such an overstated word. Oh, it's such a superficial materialistic society. I mean, you've heard this for 30 years. But what people are to you are surface. Okay? They want you to show them that the perfect anecdote of being American is fabulous with no problems. And when you're fabulous and you let them know you have problems, they, they, they actually flick you off. They're very quick to do that. And they're very good at judging you. Okay? And so these people are not people of their word. And they are, excuse my French, uh, bastards, MFs, and that stands for uh, motherfuckers. But, you know, people, I'm not trying to break uh, Craigslist, or I'm not trying to break uh, YouTube to put in dentures. I could barely even speak. <laughs> Much better. Uh, this is not about uh, breaking uh YouTube community guidelines. This is about telling you things that you know if you're in junior high and you're a cutter and you want to commit suicide. You know, these are things that a lot of people uh, will uh, relate to. People don't want to show to you how psychotic they are. But when you're out of the closet about the whole psychosis thing and you're a fab, and you're hanging out on Melrose, drinking coffee in White Weeho, well, West Hollywood, Tinseltown, what have you. And you're pretty cool. Unless you're rich and famous, they're not going to be jealous of you, of course. But unless you're rich and famous, they're not going to stand and be your friend. But when you're saying you're just living your life and you don't have to have the same dem demands on yourself, <laughs> barely even speak, that they have on you and you're very honest about your problems and your fears of homelessness, let's just get really honest about this, they will literally flick you off. That is a very American way. And 
you know, we've all lectured on this, or we've heard people give talks on this, but the American dream is a nightmare for people. And I just think that, you know, I love toilet paper rolls. I do. You know, I'm so grateful for them, you know. I never want anybody to think that I'm wasteful or... Um, I just want to be fair with nature. And whenever I do my um, my toilet paper and I'm wiping my, uh, my crack, yes, um, I like knowing that I keep these because it's about being conscious. And, <laughs> you know, it's funny how you will go to the very little things like this that to some people are psychotic and psycho. But, you know, I think it's just so good to love ourselves and be who we are. And, you know, you know, it doesn't take much to live, okay? Just enough to pay your bills and get your nails done, maybe. But, listen, people, um, listen, people. I want you, in this whole American standard of people, it's basically the new American standard of, like, people. Isn't it beautiful how this light just trickles in? It's so lovely, isn't it? Very lovely. Love it. So beautiful. Love it. People do not want you to be yourself. People do not want you to crack up and have a good time because people are miserable around you. People do not like their lives. They hate their lives. They're actually lonely. And so when they get off on making you lonely and pathetic and desperate, they metaphorically masturbate over that. When they're having sex with people, they get turned on by the whole thing that they can put you in your place and, you know, <clears throat> make you feel lesser than because you're being yourself. People. Uh, I'm not talking to women, because the women are actually, well, some of the men are the problems, but people, men, be yourself, allow yourself, really, to just have fun, you know, I mean, oh my goodness, people are so filled with rejecting you, really, everybody, and you gotta have fun. And not let the bastards bring you down. Yeah. Usually the bastards that bring you down, if they're women, they're usually fat. And they don't feel good about themselves. And if you're gay, they get really mad at you because you couldn't get an erection, like I said, and create breeders out of them. And then make a lot of money, and then they can divorce you. And uh, take the deed of the house and the car from you and leave you with nothing. So, you know, you're better off probably being a gay man while these fat women uh, have no respect for fat chicks and faggots. You know, let's just be really honest. I'm not trying to be prejudiced. That's the way they, they, they will treat you. So, men, I just want you to understand that most people, if not all, want your money. Now, I don't want your money. I want to give you your information freely. So if you're finding this video about the new American standard of friendship slash enemies, they're called frenemies. They come along as your friends and then they turn on you as an enemy. It's called a frenemy, like friend for friend and then enemy for enemy. They are frenemies and they're not really your friends. And I want you to be out of the closet. I don't want you to fool yourself because you're only going to create hurt for yourself when you do find out. And I want you to really feel my support. And I stand by you. And I want to uh, walk by your side and get you through these uh, hard times with people. Because people, people in your life, they suck. And I'm not talking being out of shape or being a fat woman, okay? So all you fat women that get offended, you need to just get therapy about that and relax. I'm talking about the gay man who is, to this day, absolutely rejected by this new American frenemy. 
And, you know, all you people that are really hard on folks that are gay, you need to do an honest inventory of yourself because you are certainly not perfect. And you certainly are not a god where you're going to take care of other people if they needed to go to the hospital. So, people, most people in your life are not going to be there with you. And <clears throat> unless you have something they want, which is money, they will not be with you like Jesus Christ was when he was broke and homeless. Okay? Jesus resurrected from the dead and he was still homeless. Okay? So, people that want you for your money, that's not Jesus. Jesus did not teach people to go out and be like that as the qualifier or the prerequisite for the friendship. And people today do that because they are selfish beyond the self benefits of survival. They are, uh, I don't want to use religious words, but for you, my friends, they are, if I can say that, even though it's YouTube and theater fandom and fans and students and clients and all this jazz and everything, everything that's out there for me and everything, everything. People, be friends of the friendless, okay? I lecture about this. Love the unlovely. Learn to give out of what you need and learn to give out of what you don't have. And stick out your uh, head to help people. So that when people are bad to you, okay, and they're not straight with you, straight up, and they want your money, but they'll never admit it because they're in denial about it. Because the whole conditioning of the American culture and people is to excuse my French, fuck the buck and buck the fuck and create a schmuck out of it because people dumb people down for this. And people that aren't using you for this, but they have their careers and their 401k and their retirement and their vacations, they will still reject you and you will not be able to know if they are bad or good. People, they're still bad because you don't have what they want to see as far as your career goes. And so they think they're better than you, and they think you're lesser than. That's the way the American people think when they meet people. To show you that this is a truthful fact, a statement that has been around, it's 2018, a statement that's been around for about 20 years is... If you're in California or LA and you have to walk because you don't have a car because you're broke, don't look poor because if you do, you won't find friends. Now, other countries like Sri Lanka, third world countries in fact, places in Germany, they handle their poverty much differently. They do not place value on people like they do in America regarding zeros behind your name. The American uh, patriarch and matriarch is going male and female that have arrived with their money. They will still nitpick at you where if you look poor, they will shun you. But in other places of the world, like third world countries, they stick together. Indigenous tribes. And the American people don't do that. And... It's something that you'll need to really sit down with yourself in an effort to bring analysis to this. Um, people are out to rejecting people and blinking the eye to friends like yourself if you were homeless. So when you meet new friends when you're going out and about, Make sure you have this quality because most people aren't. Most people are looking for uh, Disneyland perks, 
and they're looking for instant gratification of what money does for them, which is all temporal, fleeting, and transitory to begin with. And if you're not up to par and at the same momentum as them, they will flick you off. So we question, I mean, you're in YouTube and I'm calling you a friend. I mean, what kind of friend am I? I mean, you know, are you on the phone with me when you're suicidal? Am I really there with you and loving on you? No. All I can do right now is create this YouTube channel because I'm hoping things that are said will stick with people and people will understand that it's positive to come out, okay, of the greed and corruption and the swamp. It's good to come out of the prostitution of your president, okay, and know that prostitution is fleeting and transitory and temporal and is really not the way to go, okay? And also to help people know that that you, too, can come out of the grabbing pussy because you're a celebrity and you're a president of the United States of America. See, the American society thinks that's okay, and Christian evangelicals are supporting them. So when people are rejecting you at face value because you look poor in America, or they learn that you have uh, mental problems and you need people to love on you, it's about an aborted country. It's about a fatherless nation. It's about flicking people off and aborting them. Now, people that you know that are anti-abortion, they're going to go out and say that they're anti-abortion because they want kids to live through the torment that they are putting you through and that they have been put through. So in a culture that says they're against aborting children, but yet keeping children to put them through a terrorization, being terrorized, and then flicking you off and aborting your friendship, people are not of their word. People, maybe even men, are not men of their word that you know. So allow yourself to be intuitive in your spiritual thinking and your spiritual path, like anthroposophy, Rudolf Steiner talks about. Don't be afraid to see things as they really are because that's your breakthrough, okay? And really that is your prosperity and that is you becoming a life coach for helping people, you being a leader and you maybe creating your business so that you can provide for yourself and you can eat food. Okay, I'm not talking about vacations and masturbating your ego with all my glamour like I have. Honey, but I want you to know Richard Simmons even rejected me. I was living in Santa Barbara. I reached out to him in my shadow. And uh, according to Swiss psychiatrist and psychologist Carl Jung, the shadow, self-doubt, self-hatred, self-loathing, self-pity, all those things. And he called me at like 7, 30, 8, 30 in the morning in his kitchen in Beverly Hills. Sounds very glamorous and fabulous, and it was. He said a couple things that kind of, he told me my heart is a stinking heart and things like that. He kind of put me down. But then he said I was a very sweet man, and then I fell in love with him. So I started writing him at Slimmons, his workout studio. Richard Simmons workout studio is closed, which is called Slimmons. Being slim, Slimmons likes Richard Simmons. Slimmons. Very cute. And so I was smelling him food, I was smelling him granola, nuts, things like that. Pictures of me modeling portrait self plantations. I may have mailed him my singing music or something. I don't think I did because I know he's an attention whore. I am too, so, you know, don't get mad at me. So, I mean, let's just say, you know, even Richard Simmons rejected me. So, these people on my list that represent the new American conditioning of frenemy are going to be probably written off. So, I love you.
I would take a bullet for you. On days that I'm perfect, when I'm really not perfect. On the days when I'm not perfect, but I'm really perfect. Because I believe that in the imperfection, we find the perfection. And I just want you to love on the lovely and be friends of the friendless and learn to be of the pure heart to see God like baby Jesus was. When these people reject you, count it glory. The Word of God talks about this, the Bible. Because yours is the inheritance in heaven for the meek and the humble, and those whose righteousness is the righteousness of God, because we can't do anything on our own. I mean, we can. We're pretty fabulous people. Oh, yeah, we're fab. But listen, on those days, pray to Jesus and ask Jesus to just open up your heart and all that jazz and just love on you. So, here you go, America. Keep love in your heart. And don't let the bastards bring you down. Don't let the bastards bring you down.